all nine Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee calling for Congressman Adam Schiff to resign as chairman of the committee in the wake of the Mueller report. They accused the California Democrat of misleading the public by citing evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, even after the report cleared the president of such a charge. Joining me right now is Fox News contributor Trey Gowdy. He is a former Republican congressman from South Carolina, and he is the former chairman of the House Oversight Committee. He is also a former federal prosecutor. And, Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, assess that. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that? Nine Republicans are asking the chairman to step down. What is your reaction to Adam Schiff's behavior? Uh, never seen that before. We had a lot of bad days the eight years I was in Congress, but we never voted to remove or ask a chairperson to step down. Adam was a deeply partisan person. He did everything he could to make sure that Hillary Clinton became the next president. Um, and he's done everything he could since he failed at that to, to keep a cloud over the Trump presidency. So uh, the folks on the House Intelligence Committee on the Republican side, Maria, are, are not members of the crazy caucus. They're not bomb throwers. It's Elise Stefanik. It's Will Hurd, who was a CIA uh, employee. It's Johnny Ratcliffe, who was a terrorism prosecutor. It's not part of the crazy caucus. These are reasonable Republicans, all of whom uh, unanimously said, Adam, we've lost confidence in your ability to lead. And I think the next thing that's going to happen is the, the different uh, intelligence communities, the different intelligence entities are going to say, you know what, Chairman Schiff, if you don't believe the information we provide to you, if you prejudge the outcome of investigations, if you have the president of the United States not just indicted but in jail and you continue to leak uh, like a screen door on a submarine, we're going to quit giving you information. That's when Pelosi will replace Adam Schiff with someone like Jim Himes, who's every bit as progressive, he's just a lot smarter and a lot more reasonable. Well, you make a lot of good points, because here's a guy who's running around with his title and spewing out things that are actually coloring people's knowledge of what actually went down. You questioned uh, John Brennan. Same story here. He's a former director of the CIA. So when you hear that title, you see that resume, you stop and you listen. And yet it was back in May of 2017 when you poked holes in his idea that the president had committed treason. He used that word on CNN many times. Here's that exchange between you and Brennan last year. It's a really simple question. Did evidence exist of collusion, coordination, conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russian state actors at the time you learned of 2016 efforts? I encountered and am aware of information and intelligence that um, revealed contacts and interactions between Russian officials and U.S. persons involved in the uh, Trump campaign that um, I was concerned about because of known Russian efforts to suborn the, such individuals. And it uh, raised questions in my mind, again, whether or not the Russians were able to gain the cooperation of those individuals. I don't know whether or not such collusion, and that's your term, such collusion existed, I don't know. But I know that there was a sufficient basis of information and intelligence that required further uh, investigation by the Bureau to determine whether or not U.S. persons were actively conspiring, colluding with Russian officials. Sufficient basis, and let me correct myself, that was two years ago. Two years ago you poked holes in this narrative. How did this happen, Congressman? So why did it, how do you launch a major investigation into a candidate who's running for president based on no predicate? Well, let me first note, Maria, that was a Republican asking a question about collusion, because you would never know that if you read the Washington Post and the New York Times. They wanted you to believe that Republicans didn't care about collusion. That was a Republican on national television right. asking about collusion. It began because of a guy named Peter Strzok with his uh, historic animus towards Trump in July of 2016, launching a counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign. Uh, this is uh, about 10 days before he talked about an insurance policy. It was after he said Clinton should win $100 million to nothing. It was after he said Trump would be destabilizing for our country. It was just before he yeah. said he had no interest in being part of the special counsel unless it led to impeachment. That's the guy who started the counterintelligence investigation into President Trump. 
But that's the same investigation that a lot of my Republican colleagues now want you to read the report. Mm -hmm. It was a flawed ab initio from its inception investigation. And now some of my Republican colleagues want you to read a report on a flawed ab initio right. investigation. Pray, you said a minute ago this was based on a faulty investigation from the start. What about uh, the AG releasing the full Mueller report? Where are you on that? Maria, I bifurcate the investigation and therefore the report. Part of it is what did Russia do in 2016? Um, I am all for my fellow citizens understanding what Russia tried to do to this country. I think it'll be unifying. The other part of the equation is with whom, if anyone, did they do it? And Mueller, you know, Adam and Swalwell and Beto, they all talk about evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. That's what it takes to convict. Mueller didn't even find the lowest level of evidence that anyone in the Trump campaign did it with Russia. There's not even probable cause. So I realize the populist thing to do is say release it all, which, by the way, is against the law. You can't release it all. Let's assume you can just release what you can that's not classified. We are now in the uncharted territory of releasing reports on people for whom there is not even the lowest level of evidentiary standard, not even probable cause. And once you begin to go down that path where you're going to issue reports and do press conferences on people who are not indicted, for whom there's, there's no evidence they committed a crime, then we're in a brand new day politically when the department can do oppo research on a campaign and then under the guise of a report, release it, but never charge them. I, I, I hope we never get to that point, and that's why I'm in a very small minority that doesn't think that part of the report should be made public. I realize I'm in the minority, um, but I'm not a populist. Yeah, I noticed that John Radcliffe took a little walk when, when the vote came, so he also agrees uh, don't release it because it's, it, it's not right and for all the reasons you just mentioned. Look, as I think about this, I feel like this whole thing started by the Clinton machine. Hillary Clinton wanted dirt on Donald Trump. She paid for the dossier. They protected her for her own investigation. It's just extraordinary where we are as we look back. Congressman, it is good to see you this morning. Thank you.